So what happened to Derek Carr? Today, Derek Carr was injured in the game against the Minnesota Vikings. In this video, we will break down the footage and talk about what might have happened to him. Welcome back. My name is Dr. Stephen Wilson, and this channel is designed for the understanding of sports injuries. The media report indicates that Derek Carr left with a right shoulder injury and a concussion. In the replay from today's game, we can see how Derek Carr releases the football and is then immediately hit on his right side. But when this happens, Carr's right shoulder is in a position with forward flexion and is also squished coming across his body into adduction. When this happens, this will create a lot of compression in the front of his right shoulder, which can strain the anterior rotator cuff tendons and compress and sprain his right AC joint. This compression is occurring suddenly and quite forcefully, so the impact on his shoulder will be significant. We also need to consider there might be a fracture to his clavicle, as this is a very common injury. But fractures to other bones in and around his shoulder are also possible. Likely, his left AC or his acromioclavicular joint would have been sprained here on the play, but his sternoclavicular joint is also at risk here. A strain to his rotator cuff is also very likely, and the internal structure of his shoulder, being the articular cartilage of his labral ring, can also sustain injury with a force like this. Uh, that would be a much more serious injury, though. What we do know from the media report is that Carr did sustain a concussion on the play. What I want you to pay attention to here is we can see how when Carr is tackled, the left side of his head is accelerating towards the ground and then suddenly stops as it bounces off of the turf. Inside of Carr's head, his skull will stop first as it hits the ground and this will cause his brain to literally bump up against the inside of his skull. Obviously, this is not good, as this will cause a cascade of reactions inside his brain, called a concussion, that will begin with the electrical circuits of his brain malfunctioning. Most often, this is a temporary functional problem as opposed to a structural injury. It is then a process for the circuits to repolarize and for normal brain function to resume. Recovery hopefully begins quickly and is going to require his brain to go through the process of decreased cerebral blood flow concurrently with the release of excitatory neurotransmitters. This will increase the demand for energy or glucose in the brain in order to aid with his recovery and this supply and demand mismatch is what typically causes the lengthy list of the most common signs of concussion, which includes headache, poor balance, and confusion. When more details are made available, I will post them in the description below. Thanks for watching.